Don't ask how, just ask when. You got it now. Rated E for everyone. Man, but when the beat drops, it's going to be amazing. <laughs> get ready, get ready. Monday, everybody. Yes, indeed. How tranquil. Yeah, we got a. I, I, I was watching. I was watching a, a buddy play the new Final Fantasy VIII remaster on Twitch last night, and it made me look up on Spotify. And apparently, the the soundtrack for that game is on Spotify. Uh, and oh, it's wow. it's a very good soundtrack. I mean, normally it's not. It's not the uh, um, you know <laughs> breakneck <stuff>. BPM uh, <laughs> a Japanese rave step that normally opens a uh, weird thing so uh we apologize for the difference mm. in energy but uh I'm, I'm feeling very centered i could have done this one there it is there it is there it is there it is that's the bryce beats i know <laughs> hello everybody happy monday nine nine nineteen nine uh, yeah 20 year anniversary of yeah, the dreamcast why don't you see all the uh i mean i know dreamcast has been fondly remembered obviously mm -hmm. uh but a fairly universal uh, of, of praise and love. Uh, like, well, keep in mind um, that uh, it did a few I, things. I think right? a big part of it is it yes. First of all, right. it was a, an extraordinarily ambitious thing. It was also the final death row of Sega. So there's some amount yeah. of just remembering Sega. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Sonic Adventure. I don't know if you were old enough at the time, Justin, to just remember the the extraordinary level of hype leading up to you know that nine nine ninety nine. Was they spent half a year searing that number into our brains, and then when it came out, like just the level of giddy excitement before, you know, ultimately it, it crapped the bed. Yeah, no, that was like the, the very end of my video game fandom as a boy was was right there with like that that gen of consoles, like the the Dreamcast and later the GameCube. Yeah, you know, Dreamcast was one of the ones that like. As far as having the hype, and I remember like Jaguar was like this too for like all of the things you'll be able to add on to it, do to it will make because you know, that you know, they're trying to sell this thing as the internet exploding and everything else is getting bigger and all that. And the idea that you wanted to buy something with the idea that it's going to be part of this bigger thing, and that was so much of kind of the push. Mm -hmm. And they never really delivered on that. Um, which. I wanted it to be my main working computer. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted you wanted to to just totally operate off a of Dreamcast. Well, no, it was because like it was that, and then uh, God, what, which Nintendo? Because like a couple the years before, like the sixty four or the, around the the sixty four had mm -hmm. that big expansion slot thing underneath it. Like yeah. there was this big thing underneath that you're like, oh, I, what do I plug this into? Because like in Japan, you hear about these crazy sort of add-on stuff like modems and computer keyboards and stuff. Well, and the, the promise of being able to, to I don't know, yeah, should we talk about this on uh, Weird Things? There's, there's, it's a fascinating story. Sure. Sure. Well, yeah. Or maybe after things, or I don't know. We can talk about, uh, I've got a couple things we could go in and then we could talk, it's like they got the Apple thing tomorrow that we could talk about, hey, let's talk about the product announcements of the past and what we got excited for. And Yeah, or, cool. Well, we could do sort of I a got, technological I'll, retrospective. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sweet. Alrighty. I think that I'm good here. If you guys are good to go. Yeah. Yep. Alright, then uh, uh Take it away, Andrew. In three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello, friends. Brian Brushwood. Yeah, hello. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. That's me. Hey, uh, gentlemen, um, I've got news for you. 
Uh, what what and, what uh, news? Whoa! What ho, sir? News, you say? Hey, um, what did what did a North Carolina man say <laughs> and have footage of was watching him in the woods? All right, so this is North Carolina, Brian. All right, so keep that in mind. It's a it's a man, not a woman, and there are wooded and a wooded area commonly referred to as the woods. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm gonna say uh, a a a self pleasuring transient uh, uh, person is what he saw <laughs> staring at okay. him in the woods. So Brian's going with fiddle and hobo, <laughs> fiddle and, and hobo, uh, <laughs> and I am going to say that it was. None other than Bigfoot himself. Oh, even though Bigfoot is supposed to have started uh, up in Washington, how does, how does he get all the way down there? He's got a summer home, Brian. Of course he does. He summers. Yeah, yeah no, he summers in the Outer Banks. <laughs> so Justin says Bigfoot. Brian says Hobo. The two are not mutually exclusive. We'll point that out. <laughs> they both they both are very hairy. They both are, are not keen on getting uh, spotted. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say that my Bigfoot is non-fiddling. <laughs> mine is non-fiddling. Bryce? Uh, I uh, I looked this up, so I know the answer, but I, we do have a little... It's, it's spiders. We have a key it's visual It's thousands here. and thousands of spiders. We got an image. Wait, is that... It looks like an ape. No. What? Okay. So depending on how you squint, it looks like maybe a hunched over person in black with a face that, that, that twitches or moves. But when I look at it again, it begins to look like a monkey holding on to a tree and it's adjusting its feet. To be totally honest, it would just be a splotch if it didn't move in a manner that makes you think that that's an arm, right? Yeah. Although it, it looks much smaller than I had anticipated. I just instantly went to a man-sized creature, which is why I went to with a man. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> notice man-sized. Notice standing to the next to the next. Notice standing what? Next to the well, It looks like there are other figures standing next to it. Oh. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to pop this up so Brian can see it. Once, uh, once you picture it as a creature holding onto a tree, it does look like just a single leg reaching down. Here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a gander at it as soon as this monitor turns back on. And hopefully, okay, there we go. Yeah, that's the... Something standing to the right I'm of it. I'm never good with these. Like, these are all always people who are better at looking at things than I am, man. <laughs> this is this is like uh uh we have to we have to find all the 12 hidden uh, uh, bible verses in in the back I, of yeah, the Chick-fil-A. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I like Justin your assessment like man, people are better at looking at stuff than me. You mean translation, people are better at making stuff up in their head. <laughs> than what at me. So I, mean, I would make the worst ghost hunter show in the world. Bump bump, what's that? Oh, it's the pipes expanding. No, guys, no, it's not the point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, ah, the house is settling. No, no. <laughs> you hear that? It was awfully yeah. hot today, and now it's cooling off. <laughs> uh, I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel a, a cold spot. Like, yeah, you just walk past a window. We, uh, <laughs> we, oh, geez, I mean, did we, did we I, talk I, about this? One of the, one of the martial arts, there's a lot of, you know, um, pseudoscience in the martial arts, and there was one guy who would have everybody meditate uh, at one particular time of the day, and they said that they could feel the energy, and then you would hear the beams and rafters cracking and shaving. And of course, the answer was because he always made sure that they meditated at around three in the afternoon when the sun was beating down the hardest and everything <laughs> would creak and expand. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I think I don't know. I know we've told the story on other stuff, but I don't know, Andrew, if I've told you uh, one of the last times that I went to go down and visit. Uh, uh, Brian, I stayed at the compound, then yet unfinished uh, compared to the level that it's at now. It was very much just a dilapidated hobo <laughs> domicile uh, of which I was the hobo. And, uh, uh, you know, Andrew and I, we, we've talked long about, uh, you know, no matter how rational you are, there's always, if you hear bumps and creaks in the middle of the night like you are just going your mind's going to go yeah to a a weird place and at that point 
there's all this exposed stuff. Uh, the, the house is right on a road, so you hear literally everything. And because it's kind of out in the country, it's quiet, so you can hear a car coming from from way, way, way down the road. But I'm trying to keep control. I'm trying to make sure I'm just reminding myself none of this is a murderer. None of this is a murderer. That that click I just heard definitely wasn't the door opening. There's definitely not a murderer because uh, I'm very far away from any lights. And I, uh, I eventually drift off to sleep with that only to wake up to the silhouette of a large, bald man. Right picture picture Kingpin. Man, picture looking <laughs> up and there's Kingpin staring down at you. Right? <laughs> just, just looking, opening the door and just looking down at me. And I'm like, this isn't real. <laughs> this is definitely a dream. <laughs> like, this is absolutely. And it's one of those moments that you know was, a, was an actual half second, but it feels like a week in my brain as it, try, it tries to, you know, it's like, oh my, do I need to jump up? Also, like, I'm in my underwear. Like, is this how I die? It was just Brian's brother bringing me breakfast tacos. <laughs> <laughs> and then he stabbed you. And then he stabbed me. But anyway, but yes, all right. So, so here, let's go ahead and get back to uh, uh, what this this crazy creature is in the North Carolina woodland, because uh, I don't know what the hell it is. It, it just sort of looks like a splotch. If, if I was going to be a thing, it might be a gray squirrel repositioning its back leg. That's that's my best guess. But if what what about your worst guess? Oh, and my worst you... guess is that uh, it is a prehensile nose on an alien creature wearing a nun's habit, which, by the way, tracks. Look at that through that lens. So there's a creature wearing a nun's habit with a prehensile nose that it reaches yeah. over to touch the tree. <laughs> Just because as the common ritual. It, it looks a bit like, um, oh, which uh, which uh, Miyazaki movie is it? That it oh, Spirited Away? Yeah, Spirited like Away. The, 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 the faceless? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got a report here from WCNC, uh, NBC in North Carolina. Here we go. Took the phone out, gazed the hill, kept looking. He's still up here. Not just one, he says three different <coughs> Bigfoot Some... stared at him from the hill. This is just a snippet of 10 minutes of video Teak says he recorded. He's moving. Just describe to me that moment, just emotionally. just Like a school, a giddy school kid. This <laughs> nervous heart beating, just, it was crazy. He's a member of the Catawba Valley Bigfoot Research Club. McDowell County is considered a hot spot for these sightings, though the path leading to this larger-than-life creature often goes cold. Scientists say there's a logical reason for this. There's no evidence Bigfoot exists. Teague disagrees. <laughs> They're real. That is They're there. Bling. As does Vicky Cook. Was it went in front of my camera? Earlier this summer, she shared this grainy video taken outside her Cleveland County home. Oh, that's Strained. Irre- indisputable. I didn't know what it was, but that thing was tall. With big feet to boot, both Cook and Teague took casts of the creature's feet. There's probably a lot more evidence than people realize. Some will scoff, but others, like Cook, Teague, and even his granddaughter, he's moving, what? he's moving, he's moving, believe. In Catawba County, I'm Brandon Goldner, NBC Charlotte. Oh my God, that's so good. Uh, that dude personified. I listened to. <laughs> I listened to. Uh, Pedulette was on the Joe Rogan program, and uh, they were talking about his, you know, moon denying, moon hoax landing phase, and uh, how he kind of gave up on a lot of that when he did his show, Joe Rogan Questions Everything, and specifically on the subject of Bigfoot, he at some point realized like. Man, this is just an excuse for a bunch of white people to go hang out and camp and have a good time in the woods. And he said the only thing less likely to be found than Bigfoot is a black person looking for Bigfoot. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that certainly seems like a cultural uh, phenomenon, Bigfoot hunting. <laughs> it's funny, too, because like every time we see the reports of that, almost predictably, it's like the same person's cast. You know, guy yeah. in trucker hat, facial hair, turns out believes in Bigfoot, you know, like, and it's, it's funny because like, man, who's a member of Bigfoot society sees a uh, very amorphous thing and describes as Bigfoot. It could be like man in, Hey, people wearing black ponchos in the woods society has footage of somebody wearing a black poncho in the woods. <laughs> oh my, cause I, I, just for the audio listeners, we started playing that and first just an amazing voice. Uh, I always television news specifically local television news just the best at gathering america's beautiful quilt of voices uh but the guy when they go to the shot of him 
not just describing doing his like double rainbow all the way narration over the original clip. You realize that he is wearing a Bigfoot hat and a Bigfoot charm. And you're like, wow, like, did he, was he really so moved by seeing Bigfoot in the woods that he went and got a hat <laughs> charm? Like, in the, in the background, the he's got. So now I got a dolphin tattoo. <laughs> But it's... no, he's in the society. The society of finding Bigfoot. Yeah, he definitely has in the background signs that say, warning, Bigfoot crossing, and I believe in Bigfoot. <laughs> Although it does look kind of like the insane clown posse hatchet man. <laughs> it kind of has a little bit of a Could be some crossover vibe. there. So, you know, the, this is the importance of being able to capture things on video, uh, using cameras and stuff. Uh, do either of you guys use, like, uh, Nest cams or Wise cameras or anything like that? I do now that i got a place that I intend to invite people over and equipment mm -hmm. that I store there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that place is going to be locked down like Fort Knox. Yeah, I use those because they're cheap. They're super cheap. They keep time. You know, they remember, you know, you look at a 20 bucks for a camera. And it's a good idea. And, you know, big one now has been the doorbell cameras. And we talked about how some of them captured, you know, TV man. Yes. Uh, um, and uh, what would be what would be an argument against one of those cameras? Well, I know the, the big security risk is that a lot of them, if you are not careful about it, uh, they are broadcasting to broadcast to you online uh, so you can see it from your phone. Uh, oftentimes they do it on insecure IPs. And so there are entire sites where you can just scroll through the publicly available broadcasts. And some of them are really personal stuff, like uh, obviously like for kid cams or – uh, I remember there was one that famously went around that was just a grow house. Dude's mm -hmm. entire grow operation just being streamed live on the internet. There Minor was a plot point in my new book, Dark Pattern, by the way. Hey! Oh, Dark Pattern? Is that is that uh, another book in the Theo Cray series? New Theo Cray book. Awesome. Yeah, there was a, there was a bit of a flap for Amazon because they were, uh, they were hosting. If you had a developer code, if you had developer privileges, then you had access, as long as you knew someone's email, you had access to all of their live feed cameras, uh, uh, just all unencrypted, all there. Yep, which is bad. Uh, so that's one advan one part. And also, there's the whole idea of maybe sometimes you don't want to know. Oh, yeah. So we're, we're, I'm going to show some video footage coming up next, and it's the category of, like, I didn't need to see that. Suggestions? Oh, jeez, uh, of what we're about right to now, see. We're, we're, yeah, we're just looking at a ring camera right under the silver handle. So it's kind of pointed toward uh, the, the the house, the, the garage. Mm -hmm. There's a white Jeep in the uh, in, in the driveway there. Any I, guesses? I Any guesses? think it's going to be a horrific spider crawls right over the camera. Mm. Mm. Spider? Justin. I think it's going to be a fiddle and hobo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's click play. Oh, my God, it's a snake. Ah! <laughs> well, why was oh I thinking God. of spiders? <laughs> hey, so that had to be a, a snake. Big old snake. <laughs> oh. It's all up on the handle. It's coming down from the handle, so it's already, like, up on the door above the handle. And Does anybody like know? The fact that... It it, it 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 almost understands the the nature of the fisheye lens like a we're we're still watching the snakes slip it's past. still it's going, going. it's it's like uh, you, ever, you ever have to wait for a train and you just can't believe that there's that it's still going it's still more <laughs> oh my god it's so good. I think it's I mean, just about tapering off that has to be is it <laughs> that has to be uh, like a, a four four foot snake. That is 48 unbroken seconds, dear listeners, of nothing but a snake uh, slithering directly toward a fisheye lens. So wow. It looks even bigger as, as it goes by. Dude, that's crazy. There's, at the bottom, there's a, I don't know how we missed this. It could have been worse, says the article. Earlier this year, a doorbell camera captured a snake biting a man in the face. What? what? So apparently the snake was on the porch light when Jarrell Haywood approached the door. And then this is the footage of the man. He looks over. Oh, oh, oh my God! God! 
Oh, no. <laughs> oh, him right above his eye. Oh, 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 oh. 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 oh my god. I love how he drops immediately into like a an Aikido stance. Like like he's he's ready to 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 punch someone uh after it nails him. He immediately spreads his legs apart, drops down to get a wide, Aww. solid, solid stance. I mean, just if you go back, I just want to just just understand the faces of emotion that pass over poor Jarrell. Because like, pause it here. He's just like Matt Monday, right? <laughs> like this is just are those a day, are those kids ho-hum. playing on them sprinklers again? Yeah. yeah, another day in paradise, and paradise is in air quotes, right? <laughs> like that's that's. Like his face right there, and then go forward, boom. That's like I did something drop on me. Like, mm. is there maybe some like a m- bug? <laughs> yeah, somebody playing. Yeah, is it like a large bug or something? A big cicada that just hit. This is just mild annoyance. Then he realizes yeah. this is shock and appall. He is now in total free fall. His world has fallen around from under him. And then it's fear. It's just an absolute terror as he covers his head and drops into, well, it, as Brian mentioned, his Aikido stand. A little bit, a little bit of indignance as well. It's like it's like a, it's like that moment in Fight Club where he's like, oh, "You hit me in the ear." Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "What?" He went to the hospital. Turned out it wasn't venomous, and his response was, "No stitches, thankfully, but they cleaned me up pretty good. I am on antibiotics." Um. Who wants to live in a world where that can just happen? I mean, some of us want it so bad we bought seven acres of it (laughs) so that we can be closer to that opportunity. In a place where you're expecting this to happen. This guy's in a neighborhood. He gets bit by something in a... I guess that's the difference. It's like if I go to Australia and get bit by a snake, hey, I went to Australia, you know. If I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go knock on, you know, Brian's, you know, your 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 house not in the boondocks. Like, hey, Brian, you want to? Ah! Like, <laughs> Dude, that is. I mean, I can't even imagine. I guess that snake was just uh, just chilling out there above the uh, on above a, the door, just on a waiting. Light. Yeah, way too many snakes around doors trying to figure out. I'm gonna get in. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I'll tell you what, you can get in on the action when you go on, on over to patreon.com slash weird things. Again, patreon.com slash weird things is where you need to go. You can support our show here. Keep us rocking and rolling throughout the year, making sure that we bring you the top news of the weird podcast, science, culture, all the other stuff. So simple, folks. Head on over there, patreon.com slash weird things. So some scientists have decided to get to the bottom of this Loch Ness monster thing. Oh, finally. Finally. You know, like, that's it? I said finally. Yeah, I like to imagine whenever any kind of group of scientists gets together, you know, they're like, oh, here's my new paper on muon decay. And like, oh, that's great. And there's my thing on my telly. Like, yeah, but you know, guys, we really got to get to the bottom of this Loch Ness monster thing. <laughs> you know, some cancer research conference. Well, we found some very promised... Ah, I'm sorry. I'm going to stop my presentation because I don't think it's right that we go on because we haven't gotten to the bottom of this Loch Ness Monster thing. Yeah. Well, guess what? They're doing it. Yep, yep, yep. Neil Neil Gamel from the University of Otago in New Zealand, they had a project where what they decided to do was go to Scotland, collect, I guess, you know, doing, they can do this thing where you do like, you get a a big spectrum of like, uh, just samples from the water and you to see what DNA is in there. What do you find in there? Guess what they found? Eel DNA. Lots of eel DNA, which led forward to the headline. Uh, could be a giant eel or a <laughs> lot of small eels. <laughs> I, uh, certainly like anytime you see like bubbling water or out of the corner of your eye, you, you're convinced like, oh my God, did I just miss it? Did it just pop up? And then you see... A splash that's too big. That feels like that could be a, a school of eels. I don't know if they do that or maybe a mating uh, knot or something. But a giant eel would create that 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 stereotypical uh, in and out of the water sea serpent shape, I would imagine. Yeah, so would a pot of seals. 
Um, oh yeah, all moving at the same time. Yeah, but uh, and that was things like, like hell, it like, could be a giant eel or a lot of small eels. What are we gonna bet on there? Probably a lot of small <laughs> eels. eels. Yeah, I would say it. Although a gigantic eel, far cooler, more realistic, a, a big old pot of them. Yeah. So anyhow, but that's kind of a neat example of, you know, some of the things we can do today to, you know, test for these things, to look for stuff and kind of kill a lot of belief in what's going on. You know, like, oh, we think this thing would be real. No, we tested the DNA. It's bare. bare well, bare. It, you know, what's funny is as. As a lot of these older, uh, you know, monster mysteries sort of sort of uh, wither on the vine uh, as it's harder and harder to intentionally fake stuff and and we our standards of evidence get uh, higher and higher. It does feel like we're seeing a lot of other mysteries open up, you know, we, everything from the, these these creep, creep pasta stories or we're entering a phase where we're not even going to believe video evidence in a world of deep fakes or whatever. It's like we're seeing the sunset on that beautiful time that we were able to say, show me the video. And that was enough proof. And uh, and, and soon it's like even if you show me the video, I, I don't know that I could believe it. Well, and that brings us to the, the, the next story here, which is there was it came out a week ago. There was a little hazy. Now there's been more details. Here's the story about a uh, businessman gets a call on the phone and it's like somebody works or somebody works. Somebody his boss is like, hey, we need to transfer, you know, 500,000 euros right away. Blah, blah, blah. We got to get this done. There's the count and do this. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh, this is an unusual. Yeah, but we got to go do it. I'm like, OK, transferring the funds. Da, 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 da. Later on. Hey, yeah, I transferred the funds. Called the boss. Like, what funds? Well, you called me. You told me to transfer the funds. I never called you. Dun, dun, dun. What may be the first example of a deep fake voice crime? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So so how, how does it assemble it? Is that that, that software that, uh, like, like does it, does it change it live? Or So what... Um, you can do is they we're not quite sure what they're using but so a while ago adobe showed off this thing called voco which was going to be their like you know way to transcribe text into the voice pattern of somebody else adobe stalled on it partially because they were afraid of the legal implications of this because it was very powerful technology and and you know whether right or wrong adobe's like hey I mean the, the assumption was adobe's like adobe's like we're not sure if we want to be in the center of this problem because this being able to simulate people's voices is very, very powerful tech. Well, that hadn't stopped other researchers from continuing this line of research. And so there has been there's some open source stuff. There's you know software you can download on GitHub that takes a considerable amount of time. You have to train it on a particular voice right now. Although in the last month or so, there's been some new developments of being able to use very short voice examples. It's that is out of the bag now. It's out of the bag. That is out there right now is using this tech. So it wasn't an Adobe's, but it was other similar idea. Basically, you train a neural network on, on one, how to turn text into speech. And then you can go in and now you can use a pre-trained network and then quickly train it on somebody else's voice. So. That's crazy. And, and even when you think about how different people sound on the phone, how much allowance that you'll give to like, oh, that didn't really sound like you. But I guess if you're talking to me about stuff that contextually you would know about, I'll, I'll just take your word for it. Uh, that is that's insane. Uh, although I mean, it was it was going to happen at some point. Right? Yeah, we knew this was going to happen. The, the, the problem and, and thing I try to articulate to people when we talk about deep fake is people go, well, we've lived in a world of Photoshop like, yes. We lived in a world of Photoshop, and we're talking about it on a mass level. We don't live in a world where your average scammer trying to scam you through email will spend 20 minutes making a fake of you in Photoshop with friends. That's what we're getting in. We're getting into the world where computers could do that now, and computers could send me photos of us hanging out, never having hung out, or photos could find photos of look up your name, look up your friends, and then computer generate some photo of your friend doing something they never did. Or in this case, voices could say, hey, look at all these guys in these podcasts. We can do we can do speaker identification and figure out the different speakers. The computing power now, what, what AI can do is it can do it at a scale we never thought of before. You know, it's one thing when one person is trying to do this, which it made sense here. But when a neural network, you know, on a bunch of you know zombie computers can go do this at mass, we've never encountered that. And that's going to be different. That is that is the scary part. It actually reminds me of, uh, you know, the the head of Twitter got hacked 
uh, about yeah. a week ago. And the way that they did it is a more common thing that's happening now, which is SIM swapping. So it's not even like you're falling for anything. Uh, they're literally just either paying somebody at the phone company or they're able to uh, convince the phone company that they need to swap the the SIM on this account. And so now all the, uh, uh, the two-factor codes are going to the scammer's phone, and that's how we got hacked. And it's like, you know, they're doing it fairly rudimentarily. Now it's like if you can even, you know, even uh, being able to to uh, manufacture somebody's voice, it's just yet another layer of authenticity. So I think, I think that so a, a solution is going to be you're going to one only start to trust communications come from certain channels. Tomorrow's Apple's announcement. Apple's coming out with a new iPhone, and I think that. I think that's going to we're going to see Apple and Google and Facebook start to come up with like this is a secure channel. If you get a call from Justin and it's not through iMessage, it may not be Justin. And we're going to live in that world. Yeah. And I think that's going to be the role is we're going to start paying these companies like you better guarantee me that I'm talking to the the person at the other end is who I think I'm talking to. And that that, that will that, that technology will bear the burden of that. Like yeah. that we will we will create new secure certificates so we can prove more so that this is exactly who you think it is. Do do you think given and this is speculation that will be old news by the time most people listen to this, uh, but given the fact that this is just another iterative uh, release of the iPhone uh, and that there's not expected to be any truly big uh, leaps, uh, do you think that we're going to see security as kind of a front and center topic? I mean, that, that's it, certainly been. That, that that has been a, a point for them for for years now, especially as their their rivals primarily are are the Apple's or sorry the Facebooks and Googles of the world, where their one value proposition is we're not trying like uh, you are already paying us a thousand dollars plus for this tech, we don't want to then further make money on you in terms of data harvesting. Well, one I I. You mean three cameras isn't innovative enough, Brian? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, here's so here's this here's the problem. So, a few days ago, Google releases this press release saying, "Hey, we found this hack that was like in a area that was exploiting, you know, iPhones, you know, and was able like you know uh, an instant hack to exploit iPhones, blah 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 blah," which is true. There was this like quick this. The sites that were able to quickly hack into and make it exploit iPhones without the user having to click anything or do anything like this was a very big deal. You dig deeper and and you find out Apple response said yes, it affected Android phones too, which Google did not make a big deal. It was Google wanted to say iPhone this it affected Android phones, blah 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 this and other phones, and it was like it affected everybody. But what Apple didn't point out was this was done by the Chinese government more than likely, and it was used to target their Muslim population. And it was, you know, Apple's next biggest market or biggest market for the App Store. That country was actively targeting people and in targeting Android users and this. And that's a big problem where your big security nightmare isn't just, you know, some people in some hack, you know, some Russian kids with hacking programs. Yeah. It's state actors developing these exploits. In this case, it's a nation that apple's heavily invested with and partnered with that they wouldn't even mention apple wouldn't even mention it in the press release yeah, so, yeah. that that seems like a delicate balance <laughs> like, like when you're dealing with uh you know a major superpower <laughs> you just want to say like hey man i'm just here for the customers uh customers uh we're doing our best to keep you safe end of sentence oh, also it's not just the customers it's also their supply line like there is a lot invested in making sure that the uh uh you know the 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 government uh, of china is a okay with uh Apple computer. So yeah, it's a. I'd like to think that uh, I, I think that we're going to want to have secure lines of communication to know that the person on the other is one to make sure that it's not being hacked. Two is to make sure the person on the other end is who I think, and that's going to see those trusted channels are going to be coming, you know, improve are going to become you know more in demand, you know, and because the problem you have is like. You get a call right now. You can phone. You can. I've done this before. You can spoo phone numbers. You can make it look like yeah. it's coming from anybody, and you know somebody. And that's what they could do in that case of the deep fake is they could spoof who the phone com calls coming from, and you hear that voice. 
why wouldn't you think it was so-and-so? Why wouldn't you? Because we're not prepared for that. No, I mean, I would think. Yeah. You know, I, I might find it weird that Bryce was asking for $200,000, but uh, I would I would certainly do my best to give it to him. <laughs> yeah, I only I only do that those calls on Fridays. So, yeah. yeah. Uh... <laughs> so uh, do you want to talk a little about expectations? Or do you want to do those after things? Uh, oh, for the iPhone? Yeah, the, yeah. Talk so... about the Dreamcast anniversary, all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, on the iPhone, I, I, I mean, okay, three cameras. Um, everybody's freaking out about how ugly that is. I don't think it's all that ugly, to be honest. Three cameras is a pretty good way to get, uh, effectively, a gigantic camera. You know, just like a whole array of mm -hmm. telescopes is a pretty good way to create one giant telescope. So um, the more of those cameras, I mean, you can, you can cover the whole back of it in there and get, like, an <laughs> extraordinary 8K image or something. Or get one of those, uh, do you remember the Amazon phones? It's that had the can the four cameras on the front, and that's how it did 3D detection. Oh wow! It was bad. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> but the idea is there. Oh, I so I had a thought. Um, maybe we passed this line a long time ago, but since the iPhone, the very first iPhone launched, I would love to go back and figure out what is the most powerful computer you could buy for desktop computers on the day that came out. And to figure out if we've already crossed that line where the new iPhones are better than the very best computers uh, at the top of the market. Oh, yeah. Like even even an iPhone is pow more powerful than like a couple year old MacBook or even in some ways a current MacBook in certain processes. Like in, in, in I mean, there is it's crazy in certain areas how much incredibly powerful they are. I mean, like, uh, uh, I, I wonder if, uh, and then, then it gets into, like, uh, how many multiple arrays. And this isn't all that long ago. This is, what, 10, ten years and change. Uh, that yeah. That's astonishing. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it shows you when you start making billions of these devices, you know, and these chips and, and what happens. And, you know, and, and it's like as far as, and it's the efficiency really comes down to, you think of, like, it's not like a computer, current computer is more powerful than a phone. Let me make that clear. But as far as efficiency per like kilowatt used to process, phone efficiency is like just crazy powerful how efficient it is. And, you know, they're power, more powerful than, you know, several year old, you know, you look at what you're able to do now on an iPhone as far as video processing real time. You know, I, you know, Android phones, all this like, you know, Google Android, they have that night vision, that feature that it like increases like your ability at night to see. And that's a neural network. You know, that's artificial intelligence going in there and saying, well, you know, I'm doing this math because and it's super in it's insane. So a lot of the innovations are ones we just don't we don't see them on the surface. But underneath, you know, and, and I can speak more about iPhone development. You know, one of the big things is there is a there's a mini chip inside of the iPhone that basically runs a lot of systems. So the bigger chip can power down, you know, and that's kind of an interesting innovation the idea that there's a separate sort of computer in there that says well i'll run all these other ones all these other things like your face identification etc and then you power down there's that there's uh so much stuff happens under the screen that we don't realize like oh they shifted the way this is done from this processor to this they developed this whole new processor for handling this the ar that we've I keep talking about augmented reality is a big bet that apple plans on making you look at the computations that go in when you pull out your phone and it's mapping things in three-dimensional space and you move your phone around and the thing stays still it's insane and you know what they're doing you know i think unfortunately or whatever way too we're spending way too much time on how to make better photos and because that maybe uh, not way that, too much that, but that that's what sells right like that that has been the the killer feature in until we find a new killer feature i agree i, I agree and i think that that's I'm excited about, you know, because as Brian points out, like, we're like, we're going to do phones tomorrow and we're going to extra camera, which I think it's like, I agree with you. Like, I think like, yeah, it's going to be, it'll make better photos. I I'm, I'm, I like the fact better photos, but yeah, you want that. Let's, what's next, you know, what's going to be really cool. What would you like? Um, uh, Battery, 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 battery. Uh, this is the first time we talked about this. This is the first time that I sat out a generation and you could see that degradation of a two year old battery. And uh, so now it's like I can't even make it a full day. And it's like, uh, oh, I remember these days. And uh, Mac, so, Mac uh, Rumors uh, uh, says uh, uh, big batteries are coming or physically larger batteries would could be in the next phones. Uh, by the way, a lot of times you can get dramatically better battery life by a clean install. Like uh, mm -hmm. that—that that is one thing that I've noticed with iOS across the board is that 
especially as it updates new newer and newer versions like it tends to just have this big gigantic pull on the battery and if you just install like especially now that so much of your stuff is like just re-downloadable on the internet like if you have six hours like you could literally just wipe your phone clean install of uh the os and then log back in through the app store and it'll just repopulate everything on your phone yeah. uh, from scratch you'll have to re-sign into stuff and everything but uh i've actually had i've done that a few times and mm -hmm. battery immediately gets like three times better yeah, I do that every couple of phones, uh, just yeah. instead of pulling from the iCloud backup, start over. And now that they, because they added the the LastPass and the password manager integration stuff a few years back, so that process is way smoother. Like now, if you do it that way, don't you lose uh, all of your text conversations mm, back to the previous? Phone? I uh, uh, if they're on iCloud, you would not. If they're iMessages, you would not lose them. Right. Um, I guess you would lose the green bubble text SMSs. Yeah. Uh, so that, that would be something that you might lose some of. Yeah. That's something that I've never thought of. I, I wouldn't, like, of course, until I went looking for a text message that I remembered from six months ago, I'd be like, who needs these? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, wait. wait. Yeah. But, you know, your photos, you know, get backed up and, and you know, most of the app stuff is you know, is, is offloaded or is stuff that you can read, redownload. It's yeah. I don't know. Every, every couple of years I do it with the phone. Uh, uh I, to, to Andrew's point, I don't know what I really want. I, I, I don't know hardware wise what I want. I want an exciting world around AR. I want an exciting, uh, a, a development that kind of continues to push. Like what, what is the next app thing? Actually, no, you want to know what I really want the most? I really want a brand new redesign of iOS. I feel like what we have now in terms of a user interface is it feels dated to me in a way that I would like a different way to interact with my phone. What that is, I don't know. But then again, I'm not Apple. I think a big push was going to be you know, their for voice interaction, and I think that Siri has been a disappointment for what we wanted in that. Yes, you know, I think that, uh, you know, it, 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 it does it, the Apple, their Apple way of doing that. And I think that I don't use it anywhere near as much as, you know, I, I should, according to the Apple commercials. I want to, uh, I want Siri to play nice with uh, Spotify. It makes me so mad that I ask for a song and she's like, uh, no, nope, it's not in your library. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, screw you. Uh, 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 There's like the even, Amazon device yeah. is much better with that. There are even mm -hmm. little things with Siri. Like if I have my AirPods in and I can't see my phone, when I get a notification, I want to know, I want it to tell me what the notification is. And so I'll go, hey, Siri, what is, what was that? And it'll go, oh, I don't know what you mean. And so you have to say, yeah. hey, Siri, read notifications. And but it's it, like little, little, like simple things like that, that you just, that have to be verbose that are yeah, still well, And it way. seems like you could just say, uh, you know, let's say you're wearing your AirPods or whatever, and you know you're within 30 feet of your, your phone because, you know, they're connected. If you don't know where your phone is. It's like, well, I would love to be able to say like, hey, where are you? And then just, and have the phone just go like, bang, 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 I'm over here. You you might be able to do that. Yeah? Hey, I think you, yeah. I think you could. I mean, this. look, it, let, let's, let's take. Hey, Siri, the, where are you? Well, you <laughs> Oh, well, all right, that right doesn't here. count. That's, uh, that's me, a sassy answer. Actually, I have my AirPods. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> field test this while we're... Okay. Live all experimentation right. so, only. So let's, let's say that right now, you know, your, your, your co-heavyweight champions in terms of voice assistant are with Google and Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. Siri has, uh, despite being ahead of the game, was there several years before, uh, uh, has failed to uh, keep pace with these other two uh, uh, voice assistants. And yet, Siri is in a place where we really, really like it. We like it in our, in our ears and, and uh, on our phone. If we're going to say that the gold standard is like her, right? A voice assistant so good you want to have sex with it and fall <laughs> in love with it. Like, I just think we're so far away. And, and even for, for to, to Bryce's point, I think that there's so many other little things that i mean obviously you don't you wouldn't necessarily want them on by default but for as much there have been times where i've just had my i've lived with my headphones in especially when i'm on the road man i would love to just have that little like you know bing andrew bing brian bing bryce and i just know that oh, okay that's the text message that's coming in or uh, the, a phone call comes in and it's like 
call from blank, blank, blank. I, I the phone call thing does happen. I think that uh, on the AR on the AR thing, like I'm kind of in the mindset that like I've been I've been working a lot doing some development for VR stuff, you know, and because like I've you know, gone on this before, but like I think you know the the Quest is the first of many new devices that radically changed that whole landscape because we're going to get more and more of these standalone, completely wireless, self-contained things, and they're going to keep getting better and better, and then we're going to be you know three four years from now. You know that will be VR will be kind of living up to the potential we thought it would. But I've been using my Oculus Go when I'm developing sometimes, and it's a neat thing just to be able to have. I got it right here. Pop this thing on. I got my little Vive mod strap and everything. Mod but modded. But like, oh yeah, this is really cool because sometimes you're doing stuff in VR space. It's easier for me to go do it in there. Mm -hmm. You get those things down to super lightweight glasses that you just keep you know around. Like, oh yeah, let me go do this. Pop those things on, and with. You know, and even just thinking in VR, but with AR, like I can see, I don't see me wanting to spend three hours working in AR when a keyboard and a screen are perfectly useful and a phone is, but a lot of times it would be useful and it would be neat. You know, we've talked about this before on last one. I think about how like, you know, these AR things look cool, but then you feel dumb holding your phone up trying to use a tape measure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, Look, uh, uh, somebody mentioned Google Glass. Uh, the Google Glass that was initially demoed in that video, I'd be very excited for. <laughs> and that wasn't got, yeah. but that wasn't augmented reality. That was just a. That was just yeah, a. That was just heads up. That was a HUD. Yeah. yeah. You know, that was the problem. Google Glass was that we. You, you think what we thought it was going to be was one. It's not. And you're looking at that when you watch that video, like Justin's pointed out. You think it's just filling up your whole field of view, and you put the thing on, and then you see in this upper little corner there, you're like. I might as well just have my phone out and look down there and it's the same amount of space and it's not moving with your environment. You know, we were, we were hoping that we we're going to get like the magic leap level <laughs> promise, but then we, this, is, you know, this, hey, guess this, what? this, this is corpse has been cold for three years and we're still kicking it with, with, with our boots. <laughs> oh, way more than three years. <laughs> yeah. Um, it it oh, kind of, oh, oh, not the right. expectation. Yeah. Well, you know, it's doing really well in industry. And I'm like, I keep hearing that. I'm like, well, yeah. Yeah. Sure, it's it is, but it is an example of like, hey, there's a th hey, we oh, we want this. Well, this is what it is. Well, no, no we want that, and that will be cool. Well, we'll I, get mean, I think that the, the testament to Google Glass is that we do want it. Yeah, like, we we do want that thing, like all that stuff that's in that in that demo. Like if if that comes out like tomorrow, that Apple, you know, maybe it's not for immediate release, but like coming in the next year or so, are these AR glasses i would be excited for them because there is a lot that i enjoy having on the watch you know and if i could move my watch to my face that would be better i would yeah. like that yeah there's uh a some really really cool like let me see if i go go to displayland.com i think it is yeah they have uh or it's, yeah, if you go there, you check out kind of really cool stuff that's going on in this this sort of augmented reality space. And they have I've seen these examples of uh, you pull out your phone, you spin it around, it maps your entire room, kind of thing. Hmm. And it's not a lot of information in their site. You don't see a lot of stuff on there, but they they have like these different videos and stuff of showing like really cool phone room mapping, all this. It's just taking out your phone, taking photos, and there's going to be a lot of cool things that can happen, but we just need a way to interact with them. Yeah. And look, there's going to be there's going to be a lot that uh is is going to be figured out as we yeah. put all this kind of stuff together because that was ultimately the problem with Google Glass as a product was the best thing about it was the camera. Like it had a really good camera, had a really good video camera on it, uh and that ultimately became the problem because yeah. a lot of people just don't want without consent them to be had their picture taken or their video taken. And so I, anything going forward is going to almost exclusively have to be something that you are experiencing that does not harm the world. And I, also they're going to need to be like, I'm going to need them in like those blue blockers. Like, cause they need to look like regular ass glasses or else I'm going to get robbed. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, I had that thought the other day. Um, I wondered if anybody has uh, produced a phone where the camera was not on the back but instead on the edge. The, the idea being, the moment you see anybody doing this, you know you're being photographed, you know you're being recorded. But if you see somebody, you know, with their phone 
uh, level, then you don't think twice about it. And it seems to me like there's a number of situations that would be very helpful. Although then it, it occurred to me that you could probably attach a little mirror to just do there's, a, a little those, side. Somebody sold thing. those attachments, you know, um, and there's your spy phone. But there's actually, there's been attachments for the iPhone that you can just put under there that lets you sort of pick photos forward, which, you know, whatever weirdo reasons you have. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking in terms of like uh, uh, monitoring law enforcement or I mean, there's times that that like uh, if you're going into a dangerous area or or you suspect that they're that somebody might get physical if they know they're uh, being recorded, then uh, then that seems like that would be a good protection. You know what I think would be cool would be like because right now, like, you know, the drone market has been kind of collapsing because it turns out like. There are way more drone companies and people that had active daily uses for drones and stuff. But <laughs> we'll see a resurgence, though, again, because you're going to get you're going to get somebody's going to come out in a couple of years like the property drone for you, Brian. And it's going to be this drone that's going to have a station charge, then go up and patrol and come back and patrol and things like that would be cool. But I like the idea of the drone that you're going to go into that situation, the drone that just follows you around like in Blade Runner 2049. Like, ah, let's go get Brian. And we see the drone hovering with the cameras and stuff and like. Ah, he's got his robo guard drone. There there was a selfie drone. Man, it must have been like 5 or 6 years ago, I think, but it was basically a bracelet, and what you did is you you plucked it off and you put it in your hand, you tossed it up, and it just zoomed out 3 feet away, snapped a photo of you, and then landed back in your hand and then you put it back on as a bracelet. Uh, I, I think it was one of those uh, proof of, of concepts that that has a ways to go. But I thought that was yeah, a pretty cool idea. Yeah, it was cool a video idea. of a cool idea. Yeah, we've had a couple of those. We're like, oh, you know, like drones have now finally got good at following you. But there were a number of like Kickstarter ones, or other ones that were sold. Like, yeah, it will follow you, and they were horrible at following you. But yeah, there are. But that that keeps advancing, and the, and it's like we're saying, we run Google Glasses. Ah, we laughed at this, you know, because it didn't work. Ah, and then a couple years later, like, well, yeah, they work now. You know, and now it's cool. And it does. Which is sort wanted, of what so. we went through with VR. Like, there there substantially yep. wasn't a big difference in technology between you know twenty years ago with. Uh, uh, virtuality and what we got today. It's just a matter of everything got miniaturized and the processing power got better. Yeah. in VR was, yeah, with, with mobile phones that that was just pushing down the cost of display technology and stuff. And it was just these innovations. So yeah, exciting world. Um, picks. Uh, man, I'm doubling down on righteous gemstones. It just gets better and better. I'm really digging it. It's uh, a little bit in the weeds by episode four, but I'm still having such a good time. I can't get enough. How about Walter Goggins? Uh, oh, uh, Walton Walter. Goggins. Yeah, he uh, he's good. He's he's um, he's kind of got a weird character in this. Yeah, song. well, he's not it. necessarily <laughs> likable, and he's so he's he seems to be a specific uh, parody of of Billy Graham in the way that the others are just sort of general parodies of archetypes, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, so I, I love Walton Goggins. I'm glad he's in it. Uh, I I look forward to him becoming more interesting because right now he's not very interesting. What are you saying? Is it Billy Graham? But he's like a very Jim Baker looking guy, though. Uh, oh, with the white the hair and the thing. tinted glasses and all that. I thought I thought yeah. all of that was classic Billy Billy Graham. Well, look at Jim. Look at uh, 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 Jim Backer too, and you see that like there was there was a the uh, the televangelist. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. That, that, that is him. That's him. That, that is him. now. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Uh, yeah, he was, there was, I wonder if it was people, you know, look, trying to look like Billy Graham, but there was a number of people that kind of had that look. Yeah. Oh, I think that that was, that was a well, a, a, a well trafficked look in the, the heyday of televangelism, just the big blowout, uh, you know, back white hair with some kind of gigantic chunky glass, uh, glasses kind of look that, that seems, uh, that seems to definitely, a, a fit. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just, I, I, I am continually tickled by the idea that there is an awesome show in this world because I do think that it's so rich. Um, you know, I, I, I'm the last night's episode. I, I enjoyed because it, it, it gives kind of Kelvin a little bit more to do, uh, where instead of just being like a prop in, in the larger kind of drama, but uh, I did like how a, cool they made Satanism. <laughs> like, <laughs> Satanism was like, man, I want to party with those guys. Lucifer, <laughs> Lucifer. <laughs> I didn't. I watched 15 minutes and I had to go to sleep. But yeah, that was like first, and I'm finally like Keith to start getting his own. Well, it, <laughs> I hate that it's yeah. 30 minutes. It's too short. That first one being an hour long, that was just the right length for it. These these new ones being, being I didn't 30 even notice that short. there are different lengths. Wow, that's crazy. 
Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. The first one was like a double size. Got it. Uh, by the way, uh, renewed for season two today. That hey. was the news. Gemstones is well renewed earned. Uh, I, it's weird because it's running back to back with Succession, which like is like a serious many... version of the same thing. <laughs> It, no, it's like northern opulence in media versus southern opulence in, you know, professional church going. Uh, but it's another overbearing father, uh, two sons and a daughter. Uh, uh, and, and they're very different shows. But there are moments where you're like, uh, uh, wow, like you could probably just take some of these plots and just copy paste them like into the other show and mm. they would they would play you know you could do a blackmail story on succession the same way that you could do a uh i mean without spoiling other stuff you know that you could do similar stuff on on righteous gemstones but uh obviously tonally they are very uh very different but uh, my pick will be succession because uh, i finally started getting caught up on the second season there and uh man it it's it's a uh, uh, if you like that kind of show where a bunch of blustery people are being blustery to each other, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think uh, I think this was my pick last week. Succession was. Uh, I'm I really have dug into it and am really enjoying it. Um, uh, it. It's it's very good. I don't know something about the family drama and and all the power playing. Um, it's it's. It's it's obviously like a little hammy, but it's I don't know it's it's cool. Uh, this this last episode last night, like the thing that she does at the table, uh, is like such a weird small thing, and she thinks, especially at the time, that it's not a big deal. But you know, everything after it's like, oh, you kind of really messed up with that one thing. Yeah, um, which is yeah, you know, it, vague, it's you know? A, it's a show about rich people behaving badly that doesn't hate its characters. It wants you to at least see an element of humanity in its characters. And, and that was initially part of the reason why I didn't give it a shot, because knowing that it was a uh, 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 Will Ferrell and uh, Adam McKay uh, produced project, when they are at their best, they understand that they need to give you humanity and characters that you probably shouldn't like. When they're at their worst, they don't. And uh, thankfully, this is fairly clearly a, a Jesse Armstrong is the showrunner here, and this is his big uh, big thing and, and he very much believes like hey look you should just at least know that they're in pain even if you think that they're kind of gross hmm. uh, I have a weird I got a kind of a weird pick um, I was talking to my parents the other day and, and I was mentioning to my mom about Apollo 11 because it's on Hulu now and that's all you know original footage from the Apollo 11 launch and she was mentioning this documentary to me um, that she had gotten on Amazon Prime called uh, they shall not grow old, which was from last year from Peter Jackson, uh, and it's about mm -hmm. it's about the English uh, ground forces. Uh, in World in, War One, right? In World War Two. Oh, World War Two? No, I thought it was World War One because it was extraordinary that they colorized everything. And yes, sorry, one. yeah, and yeah. so that's the big the big deal is they they went and colorized all this old footage, um, and uh, you know did all this you know stabilization and tricks to you know properly treat all the images because. You know, at the time it was hand cranks and there was no sound. Uh, so they go through a lot of a lot of effort to not just colorize a lot of the footage, but like uh, redub the footage with like lip readers and 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 like actually give sound effects and, and environmental noise. Wow, and dialogue. that really does come alive. That looks amazing. Yeah, there's a little bit of a ghostiness to it in some of the shots because the stabilization is so strong or the frame rate was was too fast at the or too slow at the time. Um, but it. It's kind of interesting, and the way that they frame it is it's not a, um, you know, this battle and this location and this, this you know, it's it's not kind of a timeline at all of the war. It's very um, uh, kind of agnostic about that, right? It's like, uh, here's how all of us felt when, you know, we were all lying about our age to join the war, and then here's us going through boot camp, and then us on the ground, and digging trenches, and the different machinery, and then... How crazy, know. because, of course, there's no living person to tell that story. We only have anecdotes mm -hmm. and what got written down, and letters, and... And what's really interesting, so part of this is that they use, they only used footage that, I guess, one of these archival organizations had put together. So, 
they use voices from hundreds of these interviews that they made with survivors of World War I, um, but because they just cut around and around and around, so they don't like credit them until the very end because it's tons of them. It, 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 you couldn't follow them because there's so many. Um, but it creates this really interesting um, immersive element because it's like you're there. You really get their feelings and, and um, the the... I don't know, the emotion of going to war as, as you know, uh, as a kid, basically. Um, and, and, and you don't get caught up in this battle, this war, this turning point, X, Y, and Z. Um, it's, it's a really interesting take on it. That's crazy. And it's called Once, uh, They Shall Not Grow Old? They Shall Not Grow Old, yeah. It's, uh, I don't think it's streaming anywhere, but uh, you can buy it on Amazon. Awesome. Yeah. It is, uh, you know, it is is that weird feeling because it's a war that still feels recent enough because we can have grandparents or somebody who we knew who was touched by it or you know to that effect mm -hmm. but yeah the idea that the last veteran of that war died a few years ago and you know that the concurrent thing was to read about like in the early part of the 20th century and i think we played a clip once was people who met so had met abraham lincoln you know when we'd hear about like You'd be watching, like, you know, who do you trust or something like this? Oh, I was at the theater and Abraham Lincoln, like, whoa, like, because you yeah, watched this in, on TV. I think it was on in the 1950s, like, uh, what, what's my line or something? Yeah, what are yeah. Those? I've got and a so, secret. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that was sort of, and then, like, you had, like, you know, the oldest, you know, can, you know, Civil War soldier. And we talked about this before, like, how you had children of them. Like, there was the last child like the son or daughter of a civil war soldier like maybe i still like passed away real recently because you had like these civil war veterans who would be in their 90s and marry and then you know have children beneficiaries but you have grandchildren you there are still grandchildren of civil war soldiers well, I think uh, I think uh, we covered it on weird things like four years ago that uh, that the united states government stopped sending out checks to the children or the child of a confederate soldier so this was somebody who who fought for the confederacy but then was a veteran uh because that's the way that's the way it works uh, mm -hmm. once everything was reunified and he married in the 1920s somebody yeah. much much younger and she was still alive at the beginning of the 21st century and uh the last check got got written um wow yeah Incredible. no this is yeah. uh, in that extraordinary wow mm, now that's easy money <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's one of those no. things that really puts into perspective how short america's history is compared to the histories of almost any other country there, oh there's yeah tw no nothing, times nothing, as long. Was, nothing was more jarring than when i went to scotland and we're in like edinburgh and there's like literally there's just like just not even the impressive stuff like Here's a post. It's older than your country. <laughs> Before America it's, was a... It's been getting peed on by dogs and humans alike for yeah, longer the, than like, the United States has existed. Welcome to the pee post. Established in 1773. <laughs> Test it for Loch Ness Monster DNA. Maybe that's right. There was a... In, like, Japan, they have, like, the longest running hotel has been continuously running for, like, a thousand years. Wow. Oh I mean, it probably wow. had some upgrades, I would imagine. Uh, but yeah, it's crazy. So, um, oh, here we got it. Uh, I was wrong. It's been around for 1,300 years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so, my pick, um, I'm going to pick, I'm gonna, I mentioned this before. I've been using my Oculus Go a lot, like sitting at bed late at night when I don't want to turn on the TV and wake somebody else up, you know, because it's, it is a great... You know, they came out like, ah, oh, it's VR. And they're like, well, maybe it's more of a media consumption device. I'm like, well, that's a step down from VR. But actually, I surf the web. I mean, I love my Quest, my Oculus Quest, I love. But if I just want to sit in one spot and I want to read on websites or stuff late at night, or, you know, you can watch Netflix on here or whatever. But like, I do a lot of kind of my late night computing or watching this stuff now inside this. So you can get an Oculus Go. They're like 199 bucks now. I think if you're into VR, you just go up. And if you want standalone, go do Quest. If you want to do desktop, Brian and Justin can make recommendations there. But for a $200 device, and now I'm like, next trip I go on, like if I'm not afraid to look at stoop on the airplane, I might bring it because it really is a nice little self-contained environment. All right, that's the challenge. 
next time you're on a yeah, next time you're on a flight, Andrew, we're gonna see if you if you can do the Andrew VR challenge and <laughs> whether you can weather looking like the guy who's wearing VR on a plane. Because I'm actually with you. I think it'd be dope. It'd be awesome because like as cool as having like uh uh you know the the now all the the airlines are doing their own like server on the on the plane itself so you can just like stream movies but at the end of the day unless you've got a little thing that you can like like prop it up on it's a lot of you just sort of like holding out your phone vr headset would be pretty dope yeah pretty good yeah they think it's one of those things you see other people doing it you're like oh really really and but it was like airpods you know you're like oh god and you're like oh i mean I uh, of all the environments we're we're already accustomed to people putting sleep masks over their face so I, i'm surprised that y- any of you guys would have any hesitation no because it's different <laughs> come on that's not a sleep mask <laughs> but yeah the, it's it... the, it's a mouth open the mouth agape look that i think might be <laughs> <laughs> He's having so much fun. Uh, excuse me, sir. sir. Sir, sir. Would you like a soft drink? Pretzels. Water. Pretzels. Pretzels. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, you would have no hesitation. Oh, yeah, yeah. hello. My name is Brian Brushwood. I sit down and pout when the TSA makes me wait. Do you think I'm going to have any hesitation? <laughs> what? You know. It, it's funny because, like, I you know I got to check out now my AirPods in, and I still get these looks from cashiers, which is why I shot on Amazon now. Like, like, mm, really? You have your, you have your AirPods in, and you're, I'm like, yeah, I've been in line for eight minutes, and we weren't having a conversation. So yeah, my AirPods are in my ear right now because I don't need to take them out to say, oh, one plastic bag, please. See, so, I do that. They do shame me because I'll wear them in the grocery store, and then I'll get up in line, and I I, I pull it out real quick so that. Thing. Yeah, I do the pull it out because I get the pouty look from them, but it's mm. I'm like my my response is like, really, we weren't you weren't talking to me when I was further on in the line and now here you don't care who I am. I'm like a super friendly, nice guy. If I'm talking to you and engaged in you, it's music's not playing. I just don't want to take them out of my friggin' ear, you know, mm. but and it's just that's this guy I think I, I I think it's bad apples. I mean, we're we're the good guys, Andrew, but Sure. By the way, sure. Ca- Captain uh, Fubar in the chat said the exact thought I had, which is imagine if you, as you're on the plane, much like they have those roller coasters where you wear VR helmets, so you get a, you know, a space themed experience or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like imagine you're you're in a classic biplane or or you're in a rocket ship or maybe the the mm-hmm. Vista below you. They could even have like a live 360 camera down below, so you, it's like you're on a glass bottom, uh, oh, glass bottom cool. plane. That'd be like cool. You just, you just typed in like, all right, I'm going from SFO to Austin, uh, and now it'll just like play and, as you know, like, all right, go, and now I'm just looking at the glass bottom of. Uh, and and uh, it also keep in mind like those flight just, trackers, they're they're down to the exact uh, you know mile of, at any given time uh, from the transponder, so that all that live data isn't too much data. It seems like that could go over Wi-Fi, so you could you could get a real time, uh, ex- right. accurate. You know, glass bottom plane. I, I got my goggles on here. I'm gonna click over to the airplane function. All right, let's go. Like, oh, do I want a 360 view of where I am now? Well, I'm sure. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so high. Why did I do this? Oh, my fear of heights. <laughs> It'd also be a pretty straightforward roller coaster. <laughs> Plus, also, what? like, think about the AR aspects of that, where it's like it tells you all of the, maybe there's a, like a social network where you tag interesting things to see, and then that goes in the databases. So it's like a, a maybe there'd be like a weird thing stuff where like every a time somebody's like, of things? "What? What? What's that?" Like a Google map of. Uh, sure, but but specifically stuff that is uniquely interesting to look at from uh, up above. Like uh, it, it's like it becomes a tour guide where it's like, uh, hey man, in 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 two minutes you're gonna see this really w- rare thing over here. Hmm. And then also, uh, and I guess Google Maps would solve it. But there are so many things that when you're looking out the plane that you're like, what is that? And it's Why like it, those answers can all be available. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we see a river. What river is that? 
What time uh, and is that? Everybody's saying like, oh, some maps of Google Earth. No, 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 curated for only the interesting stuff, not everything. No, just and, you know, well, point out the interesting stuff. Well, you need a computer on your phone. I well, already have a computer and a phone. Yeah, I think like exp like I think expanding Brian's idea is the idea that like yeah, like imagine you look at it and the crosshair where you hit tells you what you're looking at instead of like. Because you sometimes you I've done that right I've, I've on airplane trips I pull up Google Maps I'm like yeah I didn't know this city was over here I'm like where is it whatever and I think this was like 20 minutes before we landed I think it's here whatever yeah it would be cool just point and look and zoom in real time satellite data see stuff was well, it a swimming pool what's like, going on there like on the way into Austin if you come through Houston uh, there's somebody has cleared uh, five full acres and and cut down all the trees in order to spell like a five letter word. That's only visible to planes, and uh, uh, like that oh, kind of stuff. Is it a naughty word? No, I don't no, no, remember no. The I, word I, I think it's the family name. I, I, that's why it's not stuck in my memory. It, it, the hells, <laughs> the hells, the dams, <laughs> the, the the hate planes, <laughs> the go away well, aliens. Yeah, we, well, we, my name is George Frick, and this is Martha Frick, and here <laughs> the little Georgie and Petunia Frick, our kids. <laughs> Well, you know, we talk about like what happens with more cameras and things like that. And in one of the things that does get interesting, though, is like the idea if you put on your headset and you start when you start putting up thousands of satellites and, you know, micro CubeSats in low Earth orbit with Earth mapping and stuff. And you're like, oh, I'm standing out on my property. What does it look like right now? Mm -hmm. You know, and like, oh, there I am, you know, and, you know, and being able to see that and be able to, to do that kind of real time stuff would be cool. Is you know well, we're then, heading there. A lot of a lot of stuff we see on Google Google Earth. You know that's it's airplane photography. We call it satellite stuff, but a lot of it's airplane photography. The, the closer detailed stuff. But well, you know what this reminds me of uh, back 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 at E three a, a few months ago, uh, Microsoft announced they're making another flight simulator, uh, and it looks really nice. They use a ton of like they high still resolution footage. Prohibit you from flying into three pl uh, buildings. Well, uh, we're, we don't we don't quite know that one. Uh, but they've got like real 3D. Uh, wow, you know, it really does stuff. look extraordinary. Yeah. I bet in VR, that's uh, that's next level. That's mm -hmm. full on. You could learn how to fly a plane yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, well, gentlemen, it's been weird. There we go. Hey, good show. Uh, anybody need a break before we do? Yeah, I'll, I'll go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, I stepped on this cord. Oh, no. All right. Alrighty, everybody, we're gonna do after things here in just a moment. Everybody have a good weekend. How was your weekend, guys? Yeah, no, it was fun. It was a good weekend. I got uh, got some stuff done. Um, you know, I set myself a little a uh, little goal for when I want uh, Raise the Dead to be finished by. So now I have nice. uh, got I've got my work cut out for me. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, it's been uh, you know it was it was it was, a, it was a good productive weekend, and I didn't fly across the country, which is really what I think was the most exciting thing about it. Mm -hmm. Nice, uh, yeah, man. That that travel sounded like it was killing you. It was e e exhausting, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is uh, done until. TwitchCon at the end of the month. If I do that, and then uh, got another friends. Friends' wedding and cool. so get back. Wow. Uh, yeah, we uh we had a little we had a little shoot, we had a couple shoots on Sunday. Uh, but otherwise it was uh it was it was good. Got a you know we had a it had been busy the past couple weeks. We had the live the live night attack and a bunch of shoots and stuff. So it was good to. You know, yeah. Oh, by the days. way, the live land, the live night attack looked great. I watched some of it on Twitch. Yeah, it was it, it was good. Uh, thank you again to John who helped help shoot that. And yeah, Stephen, I believe, who was our tech, and everyone at the Out of Bounds Festival for making it a very good time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because we had that, and then like we had a bunch of shoots and other stuff going on around that. Uh, so I'm glad. I'm glad it's behind us. We're back to the normal schedule. Regular old grind. Though. And, uh, though. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't. I don't want to talk out of school. Don't want to get ahead of myself. Uh -huh. um, we certainly haven't scheduled out to do it, but 
uh, you know, we just one of the thing that we finished shooting on on Sunday was sound treating the new studio space at the HQ. <laughs> and it sounds it sounds pretty good. It will be interesting to hear uh, if it's if the podcast sound different in there. But I think I think there's nothing holding us back now. Is it actually Christmas? I think it might be Christmas on Thursday or Friday. I think I think Brian and wow. I. Wow. We, we might. Do, it, it's. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Because it'll need. We'll need a lot of setup. That's also the day I'm gonna redo all the audio stuff. We might have. We. I'm. I'm gonna say this out loud because I'm gonna secrete it into the world. Yeah. This might be the last week we need to use Skype. Really? What will we use? Uh, VMix has their own VoIP solution that we've never been able to use because we don't have the audio set up right on our side. Oh, but if you totally redo, if we redo the, the audio, audio, then we can have... Got you. Uh-huh. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but uh, uh, talking about the new studio space. And, oh, yeah. Uh, it might, it might finally be Christmas. It might be Christmas soon, possibly. Yeah. But we have to, we have to figure out all the times to do all that stuff, but... Yeah. Uh, anybody else need a break? Justin, did you go take a break? Uh, yeah, let me go. Go for it. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Was, yeah. Uh, so, so we uh, we launched the fundraising thing uh, last uh, last week. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, it's not the full story right now, it, but it's <laughs> but but the bills came fast enough that it's like, well, shit, we got to start right now. The full story that we wanted to do involves, like right now, we're just speaking in terms of like how close to finishing phase one we are. But uh, I think tomorrow we'll talk it out. But what I'd love to do is sort of take everybody who participates in phase one and uh, uh, create a founders club, basically. And uh, next week, like right now, it's, hey, we need money. And then it'll be, hey, here's the progress. By the way, latest update is we're just shy of 94% funded at this point. And then um, uh, then after that, the next story will be uh, uh, unlocks, because right now we only have a 50, a 500, a 5,000, and a 25,000 thing. So we'll, we'll put in a bunch of reward tiers uh, between 50 and 500 um, with some cool perks. And then the last thing I'm going to do, spoiler, this is what a bad showman I am, uh, is the very last thing will be uh, to reveal that everybody who has participated, all your names get to go on a big plaque to commemorate uh, being part of the Founders Club. So that and you can come see Set on fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and, and maybe, I, 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 well. Do you want to talk about this on After Things? Yeah. Uh, I no, because I, well. Uh, your call. Your call. Yeah. I mean, I, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we could talk about it on on after um, things. I mean, it's, it's up I, to you. I just don't, don't want to burn it out and then feel like we can't talk about it on uh, night attack. I mean, oh, that's never stopped you. Fear, fear, fear not. Okay, thing. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have that. Uh, Waffle off against points out. Wouldn't it make more sense to have twenty five k tier not uh, as a checkout on the store? Um. Uh, what you want to do is make it as easy as possible for anybody who has $25,000 that they want to give you to give you $25,000 because they may not be able to write a check. They may not have it in their PayPal, but they may have a very large credit card uh, capability, in which case I want it to be as easy as possible. Sounds like a superpower. <laughs> yeah. Max Credito with a major <laughs> credit card capability. Shink. That's him swiping his card. <laughs> That's uh, it, it, and then it, it, his power changes and it becomes. Eh, eh, eh. And I'm like, I'm sorry, it's this chip thing. I can't. I wish I had a cooler sound. Remember when it used to be shwink? <laughs> and that's why I need to insert it into you. <laughs> he also, for some reason, has the Sonic picking up a ring sound. Have you ever noticed that? Ba-ding! Oh, that's gas. right. Oh, yeah. I think. I think. I, it, someone did an investigation on it. It's like some. It's like a knockoff sound that's been open, open sourced, published something like that. Oh, hey, I was thinking, is there an open source version of the uh, of Ron Howard saying it wasn't because uh, or it didn't like so, I would love uh, a sound alike so that everybody can drop it in as a joke. And you're not actually using copyrighted materials from 
from Arrested Development. Yeah. Uh, I don't know of one. It would be a good, that'd be a cool thing. Although you can go to, is it Yarn? I think it's get Yarn. The dot io or whatever that uh that you can search for stuff by the lines in the script and they just cut out those seconds so it's like the easiest way that you can get all the he didn't or oh, she did wow uh, of what quality are these like could you use them in video production or are they just animated gifs Oh man, this is this is a, a YouTube think piece maker's dream. <laughs> like, uh, uh, oh, yeah. it's been three seconds since a non sequitur. Throw this in. <laughs> That's cool. I want to save that. Alrighty, uh, so we'll do that. Uh, cool. Uh, let me. Let me double check. I don't think we've gotten any letters for after things lately. But let me double check. Chicky, chicky, chicky. Yeah. In fact, actually, I think it's a great idea because, um, I mean. I'll be revealing my master plan, but that's kind of what we do on uh, on yeah. after things. Yeah, and it'll be a little bit of a follow up to when we talked about it last time. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that ooh, I swear that never happens. Dude, <laughs> it didn't happen. It oh, got very well, close. It, it, you just it pre happened. Just a little, okay. It'll just pre happen. <laughs> well, mm, okay. So I, I have to get rid of the family friendly tag now. Uh, <laughs> I had that thought, but I but I had the wherewithal to withhold. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Hi everybody. Let's do after things. Everybody else good? Justin. Yes. Yep. Andrew. Uh, yeah. Say no. I am ready <laughs> and to go do the show and watch myself freeze. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, can't wait to see. I'm supposed to be getting fiber optic. Oh, oh congratulations! Right now, it's, it's just they've been installing and they're going to be pulling cables and stuff. And, and then it's like, oh, we're going to be pulling cables. And I'm like, when do we get it? Like, I don't know, maybe next year. And you're like, yeah, yeah like, like fiber optic cables hanging off the side of the building. I'm like, oh, when, when I moved in my apartment, they were selling me like, oh, yeah, Google is is said that they were going to install fiber here. And it was like about a year until they got to my apartment. <laughs> so almost certainly. uh 5G will be there before okay, fiber. <laughs> By the time fiber gets there, it's just easier to tether it to your iPhone 11 or whatever. Yeah, I'll be 5G on everything. Like, it's whatever. You know, like, cool. Ready? All right, ready in three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things, the show that comes after that other thing. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. Hi, friends. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hi, everybody. Uh, so let's do an update, Brian. The compound, the the the, the making it work. Yeah. Uh, first of all, man, we we're getting closer and closer where we have to have a real name, something that represents the fact that much more than modern rogue stuff happens there. Something that represents the fact that it's not just a Brian Brushwood place. Um, something that I, I don't know what that looks like, but. Uh, the good news is, is what I'm calling now, kind of retroactively, phase one is uh, just about complete. Phase one is make it functional. It doesn't have to be pretty. You don't have to have everything all, all put together. But we have to be able to work out of it and make accessory use of a residence uh, uh, for, for the studio and stuff. And uh, we might be able to move in as soon as next week or the week after. Uh, unfortunately... The way the the financing and stuff was was put together, the uh, we have to finish it before we can g get any of the operating revenue money back. And this is all happening right as we all available capital has to go to buy all of the fall and Black Friday uh, inventory. Mm. So all of a sudden, this is I knew this month might come. But this is the month where bills are coming and I don't have the ability to pay them. So uh, a little bit ahead of schedule, we kicked in asking for donations. And uh, man, what a what a tough thing to, to, to navigate, how to how to ask people for money. And it's like, for what? And you're like, for nothing, <laughs> for, because you want this to happen. Right. <laughs> and it's weird because we're not just a pure. Uh, NPR kind of operation, uh, although we are mostly listener supported and viewer supported, uh, we also try to 
uh, for those people who, who that's not their bag, let them do retail stuff. And uh, I was really worried about how it would be received to just straight up ask for money uh, because what I didn't want to do is cry boo-hoo and, and say, because I, mean, I don't think, I don't think uh, boo-hoo, I'm only 90% done with the seven acre gold compound is a very good narrative. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we did a video on the Modern Rogue channel where we took people on a tour, showing them a whole bunch of before and afters uh, to show just how much progress has happened and how extraordinary the momentum is. And we really are just around the corner of being able to move operations and, and go to a podcast studio, what, four or five times the size of what we're working out of right now? Uh, yeah, certainly, certainly bigger. Yeah, maybe even more than that. Yeah. It, it is, uh, uh, I mean, but where you guys are broadcasting out of a guest room, and this is a full yoga studio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks it looks gorgeous. It looks absolutely way more pro. Way more. Not that I didn't expect you not to do something pro. Wait, 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 clear, man, but it man, looks. Just... I I wasn't certain I was going to end up doing something pro. <laughs> 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 but uh, but yeah. So now we begin, uh, and the the timing isn't exactly the way I hoped. But this is also I I realize like we have to start looking for donors now because we only have a window of two or three weeks before we're starting to sell stuff and you can't you can't sell stuff at the same time that you're asking for donations so you have to sort of complete that 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 window uh the good news is we're about of of the funds that we're hoping to raise to uh, get everything back on track we're about 40 percent there after just five days oh, wow. and that's after only sending out an email kind of detailing everything and then the this big video is only a day old right yeah correct although although you know how youtube works like the the bulk of the views come right at the beginning mm -hmm. um but the uh, the plan right now is we we said basically hey we we need some cash if you want to support that and you got the scratch that would be great uh here's some cool reward tiers that we have including you know for 50 bucks you can actually own a piece of the uh uh of the studio or of, of the building uh the at 500 not only would we give you a more interesting piece of the building but basically i'll put together a grab bag of what i think is a pretty good value from uh scamstuff.com so basically i'm putting together some presents for you if you if you are somebody of means and you have the interest for five thousand uh, the, the benefit uh, is that you could come be among the very first people to stay there. You could stay a couple of nights and we'll spend a day together. I'll take you around and hang out and show you my favorite parts of Austin. And then, uh, and then because you want to, somebody out there has the money and it's just a, a rounding error to them for $25,000 if you donate it. Uh, by the way, this is still available. We will name the soundstage after you. We'll put a nice big old nameplate on there, and it'll be forever referred to as as the whatever your name is soundstage. Brian and, touched my balls stage. <laughs> that's, you know what? <laughs> that's fine by me. Oh, I come up and, uh, with uh, an abbreviation for that one. Uh, Tally Zarell in the chat points out, like, now that's some FU money. Yeah, and people have it, and those people listen yeah. to podcasts, and, and those people like the joy, the pride that comes from knowing that they're a genuine philanthropist and that they have their name on buildings. I mean... Uh, walk around a university campus, it's nothing but, but people who want their names on buildings. People's names, yeah. Well, and the, the advantage of, like, a, a soundstage or, like, a uh, like a stadium is that is if they're recording there is the idea that you know, mentioned, you know, that you get this. It's a, a, an ongoing kind of plug, you know, the idea of, yeah, you know. Well, so... so the if 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 you're if anybody listening is on the fence know that this is intended to be an unfolding story because if you write everything at once and then you tell the story all at once you kind of only get one at bat to grab everybody's attention whereas if you think about and justin could speak to this uh what i'm hoping to do is a little bit closer to the classic kickstarter model where it's like you want to begin the journey and then uh and, and as you hit numbers of donors or as you hit numbers of participants you keep unlocking more and more value and everybody who uh put in let's let, let's say there somebody writes a check for five hundred dollars and they're just excited to get a cool piece of memorabilia and some scam stuff then they are only happier when I hit them up, uh, uh, spoiler alert, this is the stuff I'm thinking of, when I reveal in a few days that, okay, there's a new tier at $250, uh, you get to have a tree named after you. You get to put you have your name on, you know, we've identified 40 trees on campus and you can come visit your tree. Um, and then, so it's like, cool, now I got that too. And then uh, same thing at $100 when we reveal like, oh, also 
everybody who's in the Founders Club, everybody who's there as part of the completion of Phase 1, all of you guys are going to be in a secret club called the Founders Club. And if you did $100 or, or above, you get an individually numbered uh, challenge coin uh, belonging to this secret society. And so when we see each other in person, you'll have this, this talisman uh, and... Uh, you know, along with uh, what else, everything else you get. And then the idea being like a lot of people jumped in at the $50 level. And then that gives us the opportunity later to say, Hey, uh, if you're in at 50, you know, if you want to do another 50, here's some cool extra things that you get to participate in. Excellent. I think, you know, people, uh, I, I think when you like a thing and you want more of a thing, you know, you just put a name on how to support it and, you know, as you're finding out, people are happy to support it, you know. Well, and, and this is a real moment in time kind of thing, right? Like, it, it's projects can come and go. And hopefully, you know, if you are connecting with your audience, you've got two or three of these moments, be it a, a television show or, uh, you know, the, the Kickstarter for, for me or, or you know, when, when the Diamond Club book set, uh, kind of took off where you have these, like, great stories but very rarely do you have I'm building a physical thing that'll be there forever. Mm -hmm. That's that's generational. That's like uh, 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 it, it does not happen often. Like I don't think that Brian, I mean, if you are at a point again in your lifetime where you're asking your audience, hey, help me build a permanent thing, it'll be like. Euro modern rogue HQ, right? <laughs> like, it'll be a, a derivation of 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 this one thing, and it's like that's powerful. You know, everybody is always biased. Everyone's biased toward their own journey, and if 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 you can make it clear that they are on this journey with you, then that's powerful. That 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 is something that I think people really want to be a part of because they can say, look, I was there. And, and with this thing, it's not even just, Hey, I helped make that happen. It's this thing exists. It's, it's a place I can, when I'm going to America, I'm going to go visit it. It's going to be on my list of things I need to see. Yeah. And, and, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to unfold the story over the next two weeks. But, um, man, just know that, 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 uh, uh, everybody who participates, it's only going to get, you're only going to feel better and better about yourself as more and more of the, the perks and unlocks and, and um, insiderness uh, becomes revealed as we go forward. Awesome. Well, it's no compound, but tomorrow is iPhone announcement. And yes. we talked a little about weird things, but also today, nine. 19 yeah, yeah 20 year of anniversary of uh, the dreamcast coming out right. 9999 was the day that was for an entire year hammered into our heads for what was going to be the ultimate console and damned if when you read the story that they were putting together everything from the ability to uh, have your own private screen on your controller to being able to pull it out like a Tamagotchi and play miniature mini games on it to taking that to the local arcade and uploading your player profile and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that thing had all the promise and just because of the way Sega was managing their finances as great and as visionary and as ahead of the curve as it was, it just also was the last gasp of Sega. They became a software company afterwards. Yeah, it's an example of how that era of consoles that were sort of, you bought it for the things, the features that it was eventually going to do or the promise of what it was going to do, yeah. which is great. And then you get it and then you get a Dreamcast and you realize the, the middle thing isn't in there. Like, you know, like, well, that's the, the, the mini parts, another part and this part and that. And then you just sort of realize like, Man, the thing in the commercial, the thing I want, that's not this right now. Right now, I have a slightly better game console, but with stiff competition coming from everywhere else. Mm -hmm. It was an era, I mean, because the previous gen, you know, you'd seen like Sega CD and 32X. Like Sega had specifically had this idea of like, all right, well, with Genesis, we're going to plus plus it by coming out with these other things that will continue the life cycle of the main piece of hardware but be able to keep up and do new cutting edge kind of stuff so that had been 
a, a thing that Sega really liked doing was leaving room for talk about unfolding stories, Brian. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, uh, uh, the, to be like, oh, no, buy this because don't worry, we're going to have cooler stuff that'll come out as we as, as, as we go along. It will be a more powerful device, which hardware wise kind of was like the last gasp of that idea, probably because <laughs> Sega no longer made hardware after it. But uh, uh, also the internet kind of eliminated some of how excited anybody was that like a, a new hardware upgrade would radically change the experience. Like you just do cooler stuff on the internet. It's looking at the timeline here too, because you had, it was just what like two years later, you got the Xbox and that kind of, you know, that was sort of the age of finally when we're like, let's just start pushing super powerful video cards into basically PCs and stuff. And, you know, the the kind of the realm of the sort of the standalone sort of mini box was really, you know, doing your kind of your own sort of full on hardware was sort of just Nintendo at that point, which, you know, we for better or worse, but then they've done it, some amazing jobs like the switch is just a fun, fun, fun thing. And so they've been innovating, but expectations you know like it's hard it's hard to figure these out because you plan these things several years in advance and you're trying to figure out like you know what are people going to want you know sega started planning this looking at the genesis landscape and then saying what are people going to want in 1999 and then you do that and it's so hard to follow through there's you you all read console war wars uh oh the uh is that a podcast no, a book. no book the book oh. oh i did read that book yeah yeah, I, that's it's, why I thought it was real... a podcast is because because I listened to it <laughs> from Blake. Harris. Yeah, yeah. Blake J. Harris, he wrote also, which I really loved, which is the history of the future about Oculus. But Console Wars is a really good account of, you know, Sega and Nintendo and all of that. You know, and it's just, you know, these things are culturally defining and shaping. And so, you know, tomorrow we get hey, a new iPhone. But and we were talking about before on weird things. And it's you know, like, hey, more cameras. And, you know, it's going to it's going to move this many flip flops around the zip zop. And, and I guess that's great. Mm -hmm. so, it, it'll but. probably feel like a significant upgrade to me because, like I said, I, I set out the last upgrade cycle. So I'll be surprised. Although I'll tell you what, Justin, um, flat out, the, the regular form factor is the right size for my hands. And I find it very pleasant. But knowing that the plus will, I never ran out of battery when I was rocking the plus all day, every day, yeah. all that extra battery life. So I may go for a, I may go for a plus. Wow. Yeah, I I was happy to re-upgrade back to a, a larger form factor after the one the one cycle with the smaller one. So, I mean, look, it's just a bigger it's a bigger, more immersive screen for movies and you know Hearthstone. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I'm been on the plus like I ever since I went up size, I didn't I had no urge to go down. Like you pick up the smaller one, and you're like, ah, oh, this is kind of cool and convenient, but it's a smaller screen, you know, and yeah, you know, so. I'm um, I'm starting to feel it with the X. It's not even the regular because I really liked. I I mean I'm one of those people that really liked the SE, the old uh, tiny one, the tinier one, and um, so then they had they had the one before the X come out that was like a little bigger, and then the X is a little bit bigger than that, uh, and it's just it's just a it's it feels a little too much. I even got it like a pop socket just to like help hold it up because it's just a little too big to hold. With, with my hands Yeah, maybe now, now that pop sockets are fairly ubiquitous, maybe that's uh, mm -hmm. a good way uh, thing for me to lean on on the bigger size. Although that's the problem is it's a bigger phone and then you make it even bigger with a pop socket on it. Yeah, there. yeah. Is that a but pop that, socket in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that at least would make it manageable because I like to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, man, there's just no one-handing... Uh, yeah. A plus, though. Well, they they've there got the, they've got I mean, the, oh, they, you have to you have to balance it on your pinky and no, uh, no, there, no there is there is a little easel you got to like make a little hand easel yeah. and uh, and then your beep bop beep bop beep bop. Well, they also have the thing where your keyboard can like shrink to one side. Oh, that's better now because uh, originally they they've had that for a while, but they don't they don't tell people about it very much. Yeah, um, but yeah, you actually probably have it on yours. Uh, but they have the new. I, I've been on the iOS 13 beta for for a couple months now, uh, and the, I mean, it's not, it's certainly nothing new. There have been plenty of other operating systems and apps that have it, but the swiping, the swipe typing is really nice, um, and I think that'll be something that helps I haven't, with uh, I haven't gotten the, the knack of that. I downloaded the uh, the Google keyboard, uh -huh. but it's just so counterintuitive to do the zip zap. It takes swapping around. It, it takes a while because you kind of have to know how to spell what you want to type. Yeah, you know, you have you kind of have to be a little more 
clued into what exactly you want to type. And so that does make it weird, but I, but it makes like it kind of makes two handed use a little like you have one hand holding the phone and one hand going really fast typing. I don't know. It's it's a different use case for sure. Yeah, I got I pretty good often, with my thumbs. I often wind up just using the swipe on the Google keyboard because I find the Google keyboard to be less accurate because of the swipe in terms of hunting and pecking. Yeah, that's so I'll, I'll, I'll misspell something three times. I'll just be like, whatever. Here's my Zorro thing. If this is what you demand of me, you stupid keyboard. Just somebody make me a better GIF search engine because that's the one thing that that Gboard is better at than anything else. Yeah. I uh, was just, I remember too, like I just opened mine up and I'm like, oh, also the whole idea if you press down on the keyboard, it acts like a trackpad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they're saying now the they might get rid of the 3D touch what? in these new ones. Well, it'll be a long press. It'll, it'll just it, Yeah, you'll There's long no press on the space bar, which is still, which okay, still works. I, I can but, live with that. Although, uh, yeah. But it's weird. I really, I did like the force touch, but not everything used it in the same way. I don't know. Yeah. It'll be weird I mean, I right. only used it for the trackpad thing. Yeah. The uh, hey, so do we expect after the announcement that it'll be available instantly, or no, it'll be two there'll weeks. be some kind of down the road yeah. thing? Yeah, it always it's always like a week or two weeks, or like ten days or whatever. That's been like the last several years has been the pattern. Yeah, uh, there there used to be. I know that that for a while it was like available right now, and everybody would go nuts. I don't. Did they ever do the keynote that it was I the same? Know. Day? I don't know. If they do it for phones. They've done it for MacBooks. Mm. And and some other other stuff, but they, I don't know if I can remember a time where they did it. I on sale definitely right have a memory oh. of it, but I'm the, usually the first to admit that memory is faulty. But. It, it might have been like pre-orders are available now, or you can yeah. order it now. And yeah. I bet that the scale of it is so much now that they can't right do like update the store and the website that day and be ready for all that traffic immediately yeah. while it's happening. Right. Um, I do the the upgrade like the the subscription model for them. Oh, the, uh, the iPhone upgrade. Program. Yeah. I started doing that. Uh, so no matter what this phone is, it can be a rubber chicken and I'm <laughs> going to get it because I've been paying for it for the last year. Yeah. yeah. My, I have the T-Mobile thing of that. And so it'll probably be the same thing for me. Yeah. That's been pretty efficient. Uh, you know, we talked, touched on this a little bit. We're going uh, previously talk about AR and stuff, but a lot of it too, it's like, I don't keep my phone like my phone sometimes can be across the room. It's like I don't text. I don't use social media like I'm atypical, whatever. But damn, I don't use my AirPods a lot. And and I kind of we're talking like the future of the thing. And I think you know the future of the device is just the services these things do. There's just whatever screen you use to interact with it. And you know we've talked about the idea that Amazon might be coming out with their own sort of standalone AirPod sort of thing, thing which sounds fascinating to me. The idea that you just have something that connects to Wi-Fi. And yeah, you look at what they're building into Echoes now, like Echoes takes phone calls, you know, you can send messages, you can do that. And the post phone idea, the idea that you just keep your little AirPod size case in your pocket, pull them in, put your in their ear. And that's it. You know, you pull out a screen, you have a screen if you need it. Yeah, dude. Uh, so. Yeah, uh, it, that's that's where we're headed. And, and you have to wonder how long this is the form factor. You know, how long, like, are we just going to find different ways that we can have a bunch of little screens as opposed to this one hub that we keep in our pocket? By the way, Captain Fubar in the chat says he got uh, crummy knockoff ear pods. Um, but uh, I, I will vouch if, if you want a budget option for something that stays in your ear, those uh, those Raycon ear, ear uh, I, I think they call them eardrums or something but uh they're only they're only 79 dollars and uh they they're great they they get the majority of what i'd imagine the full experience of an AirPod is yeah i mean the biggest thing with, with, with the airpods is uh turning on and off your your music like the fact that it's like it's seamless in like right out of the box they're just on when you put them in you don't have to hit a button like very rarely at least you need to hit a button you're always like just pull it out and they stop. Although lately it's been doing this weird thing where sometimes I pull them out and the phone decides that uh, now it's time to play my podcast or music out loud on my phone. <laughs> to keep on going. Uh, which uh, may or may not be because I've lost two AirPods and had to buy <laughs> new AirPods. So I've, I've, I've resynced it a couple times. But uh, yeah, look, they're uh, considering now that I've paid for it twice. Um, 
I I like it so much that I haven't thrown them out, despite the fact that I've lost two AirPods. <laughs> I yeah, they're. It's hard to imagine going back, and you know, I liked what was a movie art with the idea of you know that the assistant and thing, and then just yeah. the the thing. And the new AirPods are great because you can don't have to touch them. You can just say, "Hey Siri," and they're always listening and doing that. But you know, it's funny because like we talk about like somebody mentioned like, "Hey, the idea of like direct brain implants and stuff." Like our trust factor with technology companies has dropped so much. Yeah, you know that that we're always going to want firewalls between that. The idea that I can physically pull the thing out, or I can do this, or I can do that. I know, I say that, and I'm like, I'm like, Mister, I don't use Facebook now. Let me go put on my Quest for three hours. (laughs) (laughs) Face like we won. Oculus is ours. You know, like "Ah, I don't use Facebook. I'm going to go on Instagram. You know, so yeah, yeah. What can you do? But cool. Uh, Any picks? Uh, I don't know that I got anything. Uh, I mean, I'm glad that finally something's happening in this final season of Preacher. I spent a lot of time goofing around season four. Kind of glad that it's ending, but I'm also glad it, it existed. It's great. Uh, my pick is I finally finished What We Do in the Shadows. Oh! Oh, my God. This show is so good. I'm excited for it to come back. Uh, it, uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. It's so there's so many great one liners and jokes in that show. <laughs> you know what I've been dying to try. Yeah. <laughs> I'm even gonna go there. Um, it's just it's so good. <laughs> you know, there was yeah, Matt Barry's character on there too. He's just a he is just a delight. Yeah. Um, I was but, Jack the Ripper. I've never told anyone that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I once turned a baby into a vampire. (laughs) (laughs) What kind of monster would do that? (laughs) Just Uh, made a Batista comedy. There's, which is amazing now that that's like a recognizable brand. That it's just like he has the cameo in that one episode. You're just like, oh, this is just, just perfect Batista comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I got a, I got a wacky pick. Uh, I uh, found this on Hulu. Apparently, they made a TV show out of The Purge. These are yeah. uh, stories of the early days of The Purge. The, uh, this is the season that they've got up now is a story that takes place during. It's not oh, an early Purge. Purge thing. Okay. Yeah, it's a modern Purge. So, yeah, it was like a limited uh, uh, run on USA mm-hmm. that all took place during The Purge. And I guess season two. They're going to go where no Purge uh, movie or television show has ever gone before. It's going to be what happens when there's not a Purge. Oh. Wait, for reals? I'd watch that. Okay. That would be okay. All I know is that I was like, initially, uh, I was watching wrestling or whatever. It's also in USA, so they plug all the USA stuff. And there's Jason Bloom on my television saying, like, we're going to do... The, you know, season two is going to go where it's never gone before when it's not a purge. Initially, I'm like, that's dope. And then I was like, what is it? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's I mean, uh, spoiler I'm alert. Sure it ends in a riot, right? I mean, I'm sure it's going to be super cool. I'm sure yeah. it's going to be great. I don't think that they do it. Uh, but Bryce, did, did you like the first series? I haven't seen the first. Series. So so my thing with all the purge movies is they tend to be the same sort of stories right they're always the same good guys who don't want to purge it's a purge uh, they they don't want to purge i'm not gonna do i you know i got and um so it's weird because it only it, it's kind of like 24 where it all takes place in one night and so a lot of stuff happens to these people in one night <laughs> um so you've got like the 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 investment people who sneak into or not sneak into but get into like a rich people party uh to try to like you know, curry favor from from these pe- from the political group that uh, sponsors the purge, basically. And then you got this marine who's trying to save his do- his his sister from the from this death cult in the purge. Uh, this executive woman who like paid a lot of money to get someone killed during the purge, and the scorn that she gets from her office workers. Like the they're they're interesting concepts about what happens when you have a day of the week the year when you can kill people. Um, but I also feel like, okay, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't need to be a very long concept, I think. So I don't know. I, the idea of like what happens outside of a purge would be cool. 
Because it's even little things like, oh, I'm going to, my neighbor, his dog poops on my yard. I'm going to purge him. (laughs) And it's like, that's very extreme. There's no middle ground for you. (laughs) You Just beat him up. There's no maybe killing the dog instead of the guy. Yeah. Uh, So on purge night. On purge night. So there, I I like that domestic slice of life element to it, but I don't, I don't know. It's. It is an interesting premise because it's also it's like you know like ah one night it's legal but yeah but it's still not moral or ethical and the idea like what happens a year after it's like ah hey guess what I did in Thailand hey you're still a creep ah but it's different there doesn't matter you made horrible moral choices and you're a bad person for that and, you know you know I haven't watched all of the movies so maybe they go into it because a lot of times I know I've seen the first one and then maybe the second it's all like roving bands of bandits and you know just guys in a van just screwing with people but the tv show imagines a world where entire economic forces are built around this one day you know this huge auction house pops up for one night to sell off people just to kill them for slave slave slavery wow yeah oh wow uh yeah uh the one night slavery came back doesn't quite have the ring that the purge does (laughs) but it's it's this whole carnival of aesthetic and it's it's like you did this for one 10 hour it's 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 weird it's it's some weird stuff but uh, it's on Hulu now, so, so I, it's an I, easy watch. It's an easy put on the back. I was about to say, I think we're still fishing for. I don't think I've heard quite a recommendation. It's not so great. Much. No, it's not. It's not. It's not great. Sorry, yeah. this is a long way of saying okay. it's, it's not great. Yeah. But yeah. it wasn't. Uh, we're, it, this it's section is movie. not called. Uh, <laughs> is not called recommendations. It's called picks. It's called picks yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's an easy watch and put it on the background. You can watch. I, I feel like I have a very healthy relationship with the Purge franchise, as I have never seen a movie or the television show and yet consistently I watch a trailer or a commercial and I'm like yeah. that's clever like that's it <laughs> yeah that's my relationship with with the purges I just see the commercials and, and and the trailers and I'm like oh look that's fun I'm excited that that exists what an interesting idea and I, yeah I've never seen them either either I'm like oh yeah it's cool like and then it's when Bryce describes the plot I'm like yeah this is when I watched the trailer, that was the movie I saw in my head. Yeah. Yep. You know, like, I get it. I understand all of the facets of this this yeah. concept. But you know what? Hey, uh, if you're looking for it's something like to put on. It too. What if they were growing up? <laughs> <laughs> it 3 takes place in a, uh, a geriatric facility. <laughs> it's yep, a very short movie. One, but they're older. Mm-hmm. Less structured. Uh, my pick is going to be... Um, nostalgia nerd the uh he's a youtube series and he did a really good he does these deep dives into different sort of stuff he did a really good one about the company virtuality which was this pioneer in virtuality company which i talked about before i watched him do one on the atari jaguar so really cool deep dive into stuff so again one of these things that makes the internet awesome is these documentaries done by people that uh, addressing subjects that you're just not going to see done elsewhere. So, mm. um, oh, yeah. highly recommend. I saw I saw this this recent video of his going around the internet the other day. The the beans currency. Oh yeah, he just did one on the beans about the whole story about beans currency. Really good. Yeah. And I just I want more of these, so I guess I should go over to Patreon and make sure that happens. Yeah. There you go. Nostalgia nerd on YouTube. Yep. Beans. Mm. Cool. It's been after. Boom. Hey, look at that. Good work, everybody. All right, folks. Uh, that's going to do it for us now. We'll be back in a little bit with uh, Cord Killers coming up, I believe. Who do we have? Oh, I don't remember who we have on Cord Killers coming up. Um, you got any streams coming up, Justin? Uh, none today, but I uh, will be streaming tomorrow with the politics stuff and, uh, yeah, an actual normal schedule. Uh, for for the next few weeks, which I'm uh, very excited about. Very cool. Andrew, you got any periscopes cooking? Or are you just down nose of the grindstone? Right. I got a book due in a couple weeks, and and I've been distracted. And um. So see uh, see Andrew on periscope <laughs> tonight. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, yeah yeah. yeah. There you go. Well, everybody keep an eye out. Follow everybody on the places. We'll be back in a couple hours with Court Killers with Meryl Barr. That's who we got. We got Meryl Barr on the show. Cool. Uh, until then, though, thank you, everybody. Good work. Oh.
Talk to you later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.